The Central Weekly, a weekly podcast from the Central Podcast Network. You've got John Hinninger and Jerry LaCrone and Maria LaCrone. Hello. That's double LaCrones and Trevor Isle. Hello. There Trevor he is. is our pastor extraordinaire preacher man this weekend as we continue our Build This House series. But remember, we've got special guests in the podcast because we're continuing our ministry spotlights, looking at how God has been moving in ministries around Central lately. So we're going to talk about the sermon first, but we're going to get into the ministries of our women's, men's, and family ministries with Trevor and Maria. But John, guess what number we're at for the Central Weekly? Oh man, tell me. 60? 60? That's right. 60 episodes. Trevor, how many episodes you got to mention it? 61. Oh. Man. Wow. Starting off strong with the, with the truth. Ours collectively together is yeah. not even half. 62. <laughs> the Will the Weeklies help? We, and again, we're talking qual- quantity over quality here, I think. <laughs> That's really so. the aim here. Yeah. <laughs> Maria and Trevor, they have a lot of... If you want to check out their podcast, uh, give them a shout out. The Encounter Podcast on the Central Weekly. And then, uh, I think it's Mention It Podcast? Archived. Archived. (laughs) (laughs) Posthumously. Season one. Season two is coming out soon. Oh, it's going to drop. Yeah, season two is going to drop soon. Is it really? Yeah, yeah. Like It's like Netflix. We just made you wait for a little bit. Yeah. Uh And and they don't really know when it's coming either. Right. Yeah, exactly. So I'm excited about this week because, Trevor, you had a... a, Just to give everybody a pretext here. We are recording this Wednesday prior to the weekend. So, so early. Early. This is pretty early for us doing this, but um, I'm excited because we want to keep our thoughts and our kind of uh, discussion a little more general, uh-huh. not so specific to the sermons, but these six lessons are pretty general in their topics. Mm-hmm. Uh, build this house. Uh, John, give us a little foyer about why we're doing it this way. Uh, about why we're doing the series this way? Yeah. Okay, so um, just um, kind of like we talked about last week, you know, there has just been, um, for sure, a season of um, uh, just kind of, I don't want to say tearing down, but, you know, I mean, a lull in the, mm-hmm. the church and in, um, you know, I mean, just the... Uh, inevitable fallout from COVID, you know, I mean, like uh, separation, everybody apart. Um, um, And so there's just been kind of this season of tearing down within the church, not necessarily central, but globally, the church and the people that make it up. Um, And very clearly, uh, I feel like God is calling us and calling his church at large to a season of building up in our relationships, our marriages, uh, ultimately uh, building up his church in his name. Yeah. And so, Trevor, this weekend, you've got communities, and it's plural for a reason. Why is that? Well, we, at Central, we, if we're going to talk about building up where Central is at, Central mm-hmm. is expanded <laughs> regionally, really. Yeah. I mean, through WSIL and online and all things, people driving to our campus is, I mean, from, I mean, down south or mm-hmm. from the east to the north. I mean, really everywhere. Right. So, um, it would be insincere to just talk about Mount Vernon. Yeah, uh, for sure. So, and we've just, had this problem. It's because because when I was over in the connections role, we always were trying to think of like, well, hey, how can we show our love to Mount Vernon? And we did some like, we love Mount Vernon and stuff, but it always felt like we were leaving people out. Well, what about the people mm-hmm. that come from Salem or Fairfield and and Wayne City? And so it it really is a testament. Last week in service, we did that uh, unofficial survey where I forgot Hamilton County. When we did that, and the Beland, like she laid into me. Lynn was like, I was yelling, McLeansboro, it's like 20 minutes away, and I forgot. Mm. Uh, But I made sure to encounter, uh, keep uh, Perry County, but there was nobody in the room for Perry County. (laughs) But it just is a testimony. We've got people on staff that travel. Brian comes all the way from Williamson County in Marion. Um, And it's funny, because Maria, I think, was it Faith Church in St. Louis that said, a church alive is worth the drive? Yeah. And it really is. It's a kind of a funny little saying, but that James was talking about this in our pastors meeting. We are no longer churches are no longer, Hey, I go to the one that's closest to me. That's just not how we function. We go to a church where we feel alive, where we feel connected, even if that's not within our community setting, but your sermon on the other hand is saying, Hey, you need to thrive in those communities that you are in such a way. And it's a, it's a, I'm excited. I've read through this and uh, I want to talk to first, You talk, we have four people in this room and four different communities that we were raised in. So tell me where you were raised and how it is different than the community you live in now with Mount Vernon. So Trevor, go first. I am from Mount Vernon. (laughs) (laughs) So um, born, raised, 
uh, really only time away is college and, yeah. and back on mm-hmm. and right back really. So, um, how's Mount Vernon different now than it was then? Is well, it the number, the population number on the sign keeps getting smaller. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, John, you said 5%. In the last ten years, Jefferson County has decreased in atten- or in attendance in population by five percent. Yeah, that I mean, I remember being a kid; it was like seventeen thousand two hundred people, mm-hmm. and you're like fifteen thousand. I mean, we're probably close to fourteen. I don't know. I mean, it keeps going down, but um, we've always felt like a, a two interstate town, mm-hmm. like a pit stop on the interstate. Mm-hmm. Uh, come get some, you know, combo snacks and some <laughs> fuel and. An maybe. RB sandwich, and then maybe you know, maybe spend the night. Maybe <laughs> spend the night if you have to, um, and and that is you know, developed over my time here. And we are broadening and reaching probably further than we have lately. Mm-hmm. Um, making it, I think our our city, our our leadership in the city is is trying to make mm-hmm. every effort they can to maximize our potential of a town, mm-hmm. and so that's good. But I mean. I think for all of us, and I know you guys, it's small, well, you two are from Illinois. You're obviously not, but we, and I mentioned this in the sermon this weekend, we've had this attitude of Southern Illinois is all that Southern Illinois can be. And yeah. that's just, why is it worth mm-hmm. investing into? Why is it worth building up? It's not. And I, I hope to challenge and, and place an idea that no matter where your community is, it could be, it could be in Florida. Uh, yeah. But I think God has us charged to which I hope my community is in Florida at some point. <laughs> right, um, that's what I'm saying. But beach no. or mountains, you're a beach guy. Yeah. Am I right? Yeah. He, he likes well, to do activities kinda. on the beach. But he He's leaves his shoes and socks on. Guy. He doesn't yeah. like to sit. Yeah. I don't like to sit in the sun for very long, so I'm either under the umbrella or in the water. <laughs> yeah? So activities Or the pool. Guy. You're the same. You don't really like this. I like to. I don't like you the like su- direct I, sun. I, yeah, you like just don't sit, there. period, John. Like yeah. You know, I wanna, I'd want i like to paddleboard and... Yeah. Swim in the water. Right. Take on some waves. Yeah. 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 Challenge the waves. Yes. <laughs> oh, I'm in a room with a bunch of men. Uh, challenge yeah. the waves. But I think uh, in Maria, Salem, my wife, that's where you're from. Yep. But For the not, most part of but my second childhood. grade is when yeah, you moved to Salem. Yeah, before that, I lived several places, one of which was Oklahoma, and we drove an hour to church. Oh. Um, and I remember asking my parents about it when I was a child, not because I was upset, but just I would pass other churches mm-hmm. on the way yeah. and think, mm-hmm why is this, you know? Hmm. And it was just where they felt God was moving and where we were supposed to be. So kind of cool seeing people do that now. Um, what's the question? What where was did my you grow upbringing up? Like? And how's yeah. different to Mount Vernon? Salem, now. 30 minutes away. I would just say it's a quieter, it's, it's a quieter little town. Mm-hmm. Safe um, and friendly Salem, right? Isn't safe and friendly says? Salem. Yeah. Yes. And it means peace. And it has Dairy Mart. Can we, can we give business oh. shout out to you? <laughs> yes, it has Dairy Mart. <laughs> Dairy Mart is one of the only places that, um, I won't mention any others, but, you know, has kept solid since yeah. I was Hasn't a changed. child. Yeah. yeah, it's yeah. not like, oh, it used to be good. and Unwavering, unchanging, built on solid foundation. Right, the Dairy nice. Mart. truly. Nice. And it's the same wow. ownership, which there's good. a whole message and route we could go there too, but... Yeah, same ownership, and those people are. Awesome. I understand you're gonna have a bias here, but yes. just like quick pull in the room. Oh, I knew you're gonna ask this question. Custard stand or Dairy Mart? <gasps> custard stand. Yeah. Where's the custard stand? Are you serious? And Cesar. Oh, world gosh, sorry. famous. <laughs> but here's Cesar the thing: I think Statue there's, of Liberty holding the dream cone. Since 2020, there's a new gamer in the room, and we've got oh, Yellen Helens Yellen now. Helens. And I would I would incorporate that into Mount Vernon, even though it's in Dix, but. I would say so. Out of those three, you got to pick. I would I would power rank them in Yellen Helen's Dairy Mart custard stand. Boom, I and I hope I'm still alive to preach this weekend. Yeah, somebody this doesn't. I agree <laughs> with that because of the hometown roots. I might have to say Yellen Helen's and Dairy Mart are a tie. Yeah, um, wow. you know. Yeah. but yeah, yeah. Well, my I'll get into Effingham now. Effingham very similar to Mount Vernon. Uh, you got two interstates. Um, well, it was. It, Effingham is really, in my opinion, taken off. I agree. Uh, I wouldn't say like. Interstate wise, like yeah. they just got their their game going a little faster than Mount Vernon has, and I think Mount Vernon is is starting that process. I think Effingham, especially after I left, it's kind of gotten just a little bit bigger. Still, still same population. Um, it, going to church though, 
we had a church closer, but we broke away and they started a new church. Um, so I was that kind of formulated my faith just a little bit about how oh. churches run and uh, the newness of starting a church and all that kind of mm-hmm. my that it really did change my mindset and how I developed my faith. Like got a like kind of like the good old U.S. of A. too. We broke away from Great Britain and <laughs> we started boy. new. History lesson. I'm going to get very patriotic. <laughs> but seriously, for the I, July sermon, independence and like, hey, we can do this and that kind of spirit was it was in there and so. Now, uh, I go to my favorite place, Homewood Grill, if you're familiar with Effingham. And Maria, you're, you're okay with Homewood Grill. Yeah. Better it's, than Niemergs? <laughs> Niemergs, I'm... I, Niemergs is like, because I'm almost related to the Niemergs family, like every <laughs> single dinner or catering, that was where you had to go. Yeah. So it's almost... I got flamed out on Niemergs. Hmm. But yeah, but Homewood Grill, I would put fourth on my list. It's sad to say that. It's still really good. But, okay. And... Yeah, but Custer Stan, I just I'm a big fan of the what's the swirl, the orange and dream cone, the dream yeah. cone. Yeah, that's a good, but with no cr- no crunch. Gotta have the crunch cone. No. That's what makes it. All right, that's so let's go cool. out of Illinois, John. Yeah, uh, Erie, PA, home of the O'Neaters. Um, <laughs> the uh, you know you know the movie, right? I do that, that thing I, you do. I, it's a great movie. Uh, yeah. this is, Doing that thing you Maria do. knew a movie reference. This is. I agree with that. Put yeah. this Breaks down. my heart into <laughs> a million pieces. And that's where I grew up. <laughs> yep. um, a lot bigger town, uh, of course, than. They're, how big? Mount Vernon. Like, uh, like kind of Evansville ish size, yeah. like 180, I think, is what it is. Um, and then it's got, you know, like surrounding area. Um, and so, yeah, it's just a, a different kind of like here. If you're driving 20 minutes, you're in Centralia. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, like growing up, it was 20 minutes to school. It was 20 minutes to church. Mm-hmm. And like 20 minutes was the expected mm-hmm. kind of whatever it was, you know. As a matter of fact, I remember, you remember Nathan Vogel? Did you know Nathan? I, he was never here he when I was here. Staff a here. That's not true. We were attending. Yeah. Oh. Anyways. <laughs> I, was, that host? I was back in the pews. Um, not really paying attention. Nathan yes. moved here from... Uh, they lived in St. Louis area or whatever, but he had a friend who had lived here before. And that friend said, Hey, I want you to call me the first time that you say, I don't want to go all the way out over the interstate. You know, like I don't want to go all the way to the other side of the, it's like two and a half minutes, you know? Yeah. Um, You hear that a lot though. I'm not going to go all the way over to Walmart. All the way over the interstate. Yeah. As if there, it is. Remember Jamie Allen would time it. I made it to Walmart in (laughs) however many minutes today. I believe that. that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, I mean, bigger town, uh, different kind of mentality, much, much more East Coast-ish, um, uh, like not a lot of uh, sweet tea drinkers. Um, Nobody's friendly. You know, Cracker Barrel is the s- down, down home, down home restaurant. Nobody's friendly, right? <laughs> um, you had a major event happen in Erie, PA, a Netflix special. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Evil the, Genius. Check it out on Netflix. We're sponsored. The, uh, the, uh, the Collar Bomber, right? Yeah. Yeah. I remember, like, that was right, like, across the street from What year we, was that? Probably, oh... I thought you said you had just moved here. I think maybe I had just moved here, so probably, what, oh, five? Oh, oh, three? Some, oh, three or four? There. Yeah. Somewhere in there. But, yeah, so, I mean, just generally speaking... Bigger town, different yeah. kind of uh, culture, but um, you know, moving to Southern Illinois and being a part of Central, even even when I moved here way back in the day, people are like, "Oh, Southern Illinois," you know, like uh, mm, you're really, really gonna. I mean, the people and the church, yeah. I mean, truly make the town. You know, yeah. I mean, like this is. Uh, I'm so glad that God has us raising our family here. Yeah, yeah. I think that's a, a the, the, and you're going to say this more. The people make the communities, um, and I and I want to make a real quick reference before we kind of go more into that. Uh, we're looking at the foundation was last week with with faith, and this week you kind of use the reference of the front porch. Communities are the front porch to building the house. Why is that? Well, John talked about last week. We want to not only build faith and everything in our own lives, but also our church and how whatever God has for us next. So. Outside of this is where, you know, outside the house is your front porch generally, mm-hmm. uh, wherever you enter your home. And our community is where we live. It's where we work. It's where we drive. It's where we go out to eat. It's where we interact with other people. We're mingling with others. And so it's worth building up our community because it's kind of the the doormat of uh, the welcoming place of, mm-hmm. our, of our church. Yeah. 
That's and all, really all four of us pretty much use our front porch, front yards areas. Like it's, oh, I would think it's a lot more rare now to have a front porch area. That was really big in the 50s and 60s. You sit on the front porch, you watch the kids play. For a four, the R4, we kind of do that a little bit. I know that you guys, you know, you've got a, a cul-de-sac. Did I say that right? Cul-de-sac? Yeah. I put the D in there. You're good welcome, job. Maria. I only did that because you're, you're on the podcast. Uh, but Trevor's house has some good hostas. Yeah, it does. I have the largest hosta in the world. You really do. Number one <laughs> I hosta. I think it could be wow. Guinness, Guinness <laughs> yeah, record. That's worthy. Things. But in, <laughs> in general, though, you have a lot of people that are just going in their, uh, going in their uh, garages and they don't go, use their front door. And I think that's a little bit of an individuality that we have within. You can look at the home and kind of mirror that with our faith and the communities that we live in. There's so many things that are so individualistic that I go to work, I go into my home, and I don't interact with the community that I live in. Um, and I, here's the thing that I really like that you said a lot. Well, you're going to say, you're the inner work that we need to do because people change communities. Yeah, it, the idea that your community is going to change or change in a way that it's honoring to to jesus yeah it's not going to change on its own yeah i mean there's just no way it, it's going to take people who have allowed themselves to be transformed on the inside by jesus to then put roots down and mm-hmm. and be able to change a community it's, yeah. it's not going to change on its own yeah uh in a positive way in a, in a christ honoring way so it is absolutely people who are who have already allowed that transformation process to happen within them mm-hmm. to then go in and, and put those roots down and, and change that for a community. And I think you're putting, you're changing a lot of lives um, in the form of um, sports here. Um, the referee game that you um, host in the, I think that's important for people to know that, that that's you. That's you that call, making those calls. 100% right, 100% all the time. We'll reference it slightly <laughs> uh, this weekend. I mean, I just I just want to thank the people who have taken the time to guide me and direct me mm. when I'm out there making calls. Sure, it's huge. It's huge. It's, it's usually I mean, you're soliciting advice is what you're doing. <laughs> just I got a sign that says, here, "Please help." Did anyone in here see it clearly? <laughs> <laughs> I'm needing some help. Point right blank now. question: This weekend, you will look in the eyes of people that have yelled at you in a gymnasium in Southern Illinois. For sure. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah, yeah. For sure. Sure. Yeah. John, has that ever happened to you? <laughs> no. I'm, I'm a scoreboard guy. <laughs> <laughs> Get the scoreboard right, mister. <laughs> you, you, but you quiet them down. That's for sure. Yeah. So here's the question I want to go into, because I, I want you to read Romans 12. Do you have it in front of you, Trevor? Um, the message version? Or yes. The other that's yes. the one I want you to read. Because yep. I think you right you, your, your plan this weekend is to end, kind of end it with this. And, it's, and I love this version, this translation of it, because it's so... Um, monumental in what you what we're meant to do as people in our communities, but also very simple in, hey, let's not make it too much of what it is. Go, go ahead and read that for us. Romans 12, 1 and 2 from the message version. So here's what I want you to do, God helping you. Take your everyday, ordinary life, your sleeping, eating, going to work, and walking around life, and place it before God as an offering. Embracing what God does for you is the best thing that you can do for Him. Don't become so well-adjusted to your culture that you fit into it without even thinking. Instead, Fix your attention on God. You'll be changed from the inside out. Readily recognize what he wants from you and quickly respond to it, unlike the culture around you, always dragging you down to its level of immaturity. God brings out the best of you, develops well-formed maturity in you. And you really challenge us to say, hey, you have this is the inner work that you do. You have Christ in you. We are meant to be change makers in our community. Like you said, you said uh, Jesus broke barriers and we live in a divide. They lived in a divided world then, you know, he had the Jews and Gentiles. Mm -hmm. We live in a divided world now and where you almost have Christians and non-Christians, but it's almost, and it gets a little fuzzy. Um, But your big thing at the end is you want to say, we need to stop compartmentalizing our communities. Yeah. It's, I think it's an easy temptation to say, my work area doesn't affect my home area. My home area doesn't affect whatever. When I go out to eat, that's just that little bubble. When I go to a sporting event, that's just that bubble. And like we just we pop in and out of these bubbles. But in reality, especially if we're going to attempt to build a community and build a community in a God-honoring way, all of those things mix, to, mix together, filtered through the lens of Scripture. And yeah. that is the way to build a community. I don't know if you added it or not, but we just in talking about this sermon with Trev, um, yeah, I mean, scripture, of course, refers to salt and light, right? I mean, mm-hmm. and salt 
uh, seasons salt preserves. Um, but the thing about it is it can't season and it can't preserve if it's not in contact with whatever it's supposed to season or preserve. And so I feel like that's really, um, I mean, that's this point of community, right? Mm -hmm. Is that like, if we're not in our communities, if we're not reffing basketball games Mm -hmm. and, um, you know, driving buses, whatever it is, you know, (laughs) I mean, if we're not in connection with our community, then part of our purpose as a Christian is really not being fulfilled. Yeah. That's a great point. I think it's, and I'm, I'm glad that you were the one to, to do this too, um, just because you have, you've been here in Mount Vernon and you're able to just to translate a lot of things that a lot of people are feeling and thinking. And, uh, and we do that so often where you're like, this is my uh, space for these people and these are my space, but we don't intertwine them like we should and like we're called to. Yeah. So, okay. We're going to change gears slightly. I'm we're going to talk. Up. Wait, what? What flavor is that? Honey crisp. Yes. Does it sound like that? I apologize to all of you who have the same, um, I don't know if it's a disorder, but that I have that don't you don't like to it. hear people do chew. <clears throat> I, I apologize on behalf of our lead pastor right now. They've already turned the, the episode <laughs> off. They've got those issues. <laughs> also, I, I would the... like it to go on record that my word of the year is salt. Oh. Anybody else do word of the year? Trevor? <laughs> I don't actually think I've ever done it before this year, but New Year's Eve, we all sat down throughout the year. and did it. Yours was revelation. Well, actually, yeah. you said wisdom and revelation. Wisdom. I don't know. <laughs> that would be me. <laughs> I'm going to have to. Um, but really, yeah. If anybody knows my husband, extra is a good word. Wisdom and revelation. Um, so yeah. let's talk Let's talk ministries. Okay, so we have Maria LaCrone, our women's pastor here at Central. And then Trevor Isle is our family ministries pastor with an emphasis on men. <laughs> what I mean, if you just said, yeah, men's what, pastor? What if Trevor was the women's pastor. <laughs> that would I didn't I said it correctly, and I'm still getting oh, something. So funny. So let's have ladies go first. Maria, tell us a little bit about your kept ministry at Central. I don't want to say sorry. I said your because it's you've you've corrected me before on that. This is something you get the opportunity and the privilege to lead, uh, but it takes a lot of other people, and you've got a lot of women that are doing super super cool things in 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 the kingdom of light. And so tell us about it. Yeah, kept sisterhood started in 2019. Check out Mention It podcast for the um, birthing story of that. But that was about a year ago, I think. I have that no you guys idea. did that episode. Time all meshes Super together. Um, but yeah, in March of this year, we got to hold our second um, kept conference ever, and that was really neat. Um, Trevor's wife, Phoebe, was one of our speakers, as well as Hope Moffat. Silent and, assassin. Not Hope, but Phoebe. Yeah, we call her the silent assassin. But um, it was just special because so many um, that aren't able to come to Central every mm-hmm. single weekend were also here. And mm-hmm. just to get to plant those seeds and come in community together on that one day and then be sent out was very special. And thank you if you were here or prayed for it. Mm -hmm. Um, and then we do Bible studies throughout the year and nothing new or, you know, reinventing the wheel, but man, when you get a few hungry people together and Mm -hmm. with what is going on in our culture, in our world right now, people want the truth. Um, and we have copies of it actually in our study this week, it's called gospel on the ground. It talks a lot about the early church and Jewish culture. And, and they talk about the simple fact that they didn't have Bibles, Mm -hmm. um, you know, they, they went to the synagogue together mm-hmm. to hear the word, but, but we take that for granted. So to have this truth with us at all times and be able to meet in community, it's just a recipe for, um, good, good things. So yeah. getting to see that, um, actually I asked permission, I won't share her name, but we have a little private group of people who are in these Bible studies. And I feel like what this one woman said this week encapsulates mm. so much of what God has been doing. Um, She said, for a few years now, I've had a very strong desire to soak up and learn everything I can. I've dreamt of being a part of a group of women that is so hungry for God. I don't know if desperation is the correct term to use, but it's how I feel like someone who is extremely thirsty and all they want is that drink of water. And then she talks about a part in the video. um, And she said, I looked around the room at all of you and Holy Spirit said, this is what you wanted. I am here. Mm -hmm. So... Um, really cool. It's just been neat. I love that kept involves women and girls of all ages. Um, and so there's like natural mentorships that come out of that and relationships that apart from the community of God that we're blessed to have in this house, they wouldn't have had those connections, you know? 
I think before the ministry, we had a lot of, a lot of powerful women that were wanting to get those connections and they were, but they were just, there, there wasn't anything that was bringing them together. And now we're able to kind of witness what happens and what can happen when they come together. Um, and it's, and, sorry, women's group too yeah. is happening, which we kind of Joel copied Trev had men's group going and, um, Randy Davis and Patty rocket head up women's group every second and fourth Tuesday at six o'clock. And it has been a game changer mm-hmm. to have an on ramp for these people or like, I want something very soon. And let's yeah. see, I don't know when my next Bible study is, you know? Um, but yeah, right now they're, they're doing a simple how to study the word of God. And, you know, I can attest, I was staff on a church and I wasn't living out some of the basic things because mm-hmm. I really didn't have training in it, you know, and, and being able to equip people in really practical ways where they don't have to just act like they already know how to do it. Yeah. You know, fake it till you make it. Yeah. I had a lady in the atrium this weekend. I think she's from I th- Mulkey Town. Yeah. Mulkey Town. I can't remember her name at the moment. Uh, Maybe she's listening. She's offended now. Um, But she was just saying, hey, I need to get connected. I feel like I need to get She has a a teenage daughter, and she just knows that she really can't mentally put her put herself into a Bible study, just with the training and mm-hmm. the craziness of, of her life right now. But she said, I just want to meet women. I just want to get to know, and I want to lean on people. And it was nice to just say, hey, and I actually, uh, Patty Rocket was in the atrium too. I said, Patty, come over here. Tell us, tell That's her awesome. about your group. And, and it works for her schedule too. She's able to come up, uh, travel a little bit to do that on. And again, tell me the dates, the, the, the times of the month. The second and fourth okay. Tuesday at six o'clock and every month. Trevor, just a side note. The men's is when? First and third Tuesday of the month. And for continuity, we probably should have made them at the same time, but ours is at 630. <laughs> <laughs> so don't be confused. But here's the thing. All of this is on the website. If you are want these details, centralnow.com slash groups. Um, the groups that we're talking about right now, we, we kind of call, we call those ongoing groups because uh, they're outside of that scheduled time. So Maria has your scheduled Bible study that happens at 915. We have scheduled groups that James leads for a winter and a... And a um, uh, spring term, but uh, these are the ongoing groups that meet uh, monthly. So, Maria, anything else you want to share with us? I don't think so. Just excited about what God is doing and who He's connecting, and yeah, exciting. Cool, Trevor, with an emphasis on men. Men's group really got its formal start. Um, I mean, we're in April now, so a year ago, March. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, because it uh, March Madness. Yeah. So yeah, that's right. Thirteen months ago, it mm-hmm. really got a got a got kicked off uh like you said we do men's group two times a month generally and uh that's it's pretty laid back and it's just a time for there's a pretty core group of guys that are in there mm-hmm. um and sometimes there's 30-ish people in there sometimes there's 16 it's just kind of and a wide variety of ages too like very wide yeah. variety of age, ages um you got guys like chapel davis who are you know early 20s to guys who are in their 70s it just kind of Kind of ranges in a in, in a good direction there, um, so that's pretty laid back. Good discussion. Uh, the topics vary. I would like to try to do some some Bible study things at nine fifteen on the off times that Maria is mm-hmm. doing those. We haven't incorporated those yet. We recently tried a men's breakfast summit in March for the first time. Well, it's really that good. was yeah. probably our our best thing that we've done to date. It was delicious. Yeah, it, we had about eighty five, eighty six people there, and we ate, and there was good discussion and. You know, some people, you know, there was intentional time to talk around the table, both about just food or whatever, and also about spiritual things that we were studying that day. We were in Book of Judges. So it was good, uh, something that we will try to do three or four times a year. And last year we did a cookout in the summer that had a good success thing, just kind of guys meeting one another and hanging out. Uh, We tried a fantasy football thing in the fall uh, which had 100 people in it and that and was I think fun John to won that right oh no never yeah. mind <laughs> John who, who did win who was the winner um, the overall guy. winner was Trevor Barchesi yes. okay yes. yeah so he is like 19 and let's yeah. talk about that belt that he received. That, that was thing, sweet. That was awesome. If you go, go I think it's on your uh, Facebook page. Yep. Both, of, both of you, Maria, you have a Facebook page for Work Your Cat Ministry. Trevor, you have a Facebook group. Correct. So both of these, if you go to Central Now or Facebook.com slash Central MV, you'll be able to find both of these. But there's a picture of Trevor holding that belt. Yeah. And it's, it's pretty cool. It was like the old <laughs> wrestling style. Yep. Awesome championship belt. John, did you ever watch wrestling growing up? 
I don't wasn't think allowed. You, yeah, probably not. Did you? You did. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, but that like, makes sense. Uh, mid to late nineties was yep. my prime time of viewing. I was the same way. Back the before it changed, back when it was WWF was and the it. WCW wars and all yeah. that. Yeah, that I'll tell it. you. Actually, the only I'm jumping on this apple while, while I talk. <laughs> but, um, I'll tell you. Like I wasn't. Like I said, I wasn't really allowed to watch wrestling growing mm-hmm. up. And um, probably, yeah, it's probably good. <laughs> I remember on my senior trip though, we were at a hotel in Toronto, Canada, and we were a bunch of us chipped in for the pay per view wrestling match and it was the I mean like my first real wrestling match was when Owen Hart died when he fell out of the ah, rafters ah like, yes yeah, the one that I yes yeah. I was watching that as well look and, at that under yeah. the same look at us Fival under the same moon mm-hmm. oh gosh Fival goes west <laughs> That's, I was like you give it some very obscure references in this podcast yeah. that only a few people are like allowed, oh yeah you're allowed but, to watch that but not wrestling yeah for sure <laughs> Somewhere out there under the same <laughs> WWE. There we were, Trev. But Trevor, I, no here's, I think John would agree with this. There has been a lot more intentionality among our men at Central than I think than the last couple of years. And I think this is a super neat ministry that people, the guys have been really wanting. And I've seen so, I mean, from guest services to helping out in Kid Depot to working with like bed builds and stuff like that. There's so much intentionality now with a, a big group set of men. And you was like, even at your men's breakfast, you had more than enough help to cook that thing, but they just wanted help. to be there yeah. to be around yeah. the other What are you going to say? No, don't come help. Well, right. we had no. too much help, but yeah. yeah. I mean, that's, uh, that's the last problem we need to try to fix. Yeah. Yeah. I love the. I mean, both men's and women's, though. I mean, just like the the community that that cultivates, you know, um, amongst um, men and women. But like uh, this whole thing that happened with Chuck McGee, um, mm. you know, I mean, here he is, literally, Jacksville fall truck falls on him, crushes part of his body, um, and there's just a lot of logistical stuff that a wife would have to worry about in those kind of seasons. You know, I mean, praise God, thank God, he lived and he's on the road to recovery. But at the same time. I mean, the yard needs mowed. Mm-hmm. Some stuff needs taken care of, you know. And yep. um, some guys from your men's ministry, yep. guys are on it. Stepped up and said, hey, "Until he's better, uh, you're mm-hmm. not going to have to worry about it." Yep. All right. So, last question for both of you: What's next? What is God pushing you guys to in your next next couple months with the men's and women's ministries? I'm in a spot where I'm not married to anything right now. I mean. There are some things that I, a year in, there's some things I would repeat and there are some things I would let go. We've already seen that. We kind of let go of the March Madness thing and tried the men's breakfast thing. Um, so I, I am not married to anything. I'm willing to, to figure out where, whatever is the most effective and scrap mm-hmm. it quickly. Mm-hmm. Uh, we would like to, like I said, do some Bible study things on Sundays, incorporate that on some times we would like to, um, it's, I would say the challenge for men's ministry is this. Since it was brand new and women's had been established for, I don't know, a handful of years before, there were some people who said, we want it to be like this because this is what the women are doing. And it was like we had to both cast a very wide net and a very narrow focus at the same time. Mm-hmm. And so it's been a challenge to, to work both ends of that spectrum. And so we're just going to continue to try to take the wide net and then funnel yeah. them down to the, to the narrowed focused intentional and I, part and i think it's right and with a new ministry you need to be flexible what's work what's going to work and what's not going to work let's replicate what worked let's yeah. toss what doesn't so i think it's super smart we do food a lot though i mean everything we do has food always wisely so yeah so we are married to that speaking of speaking of married to maria yes. my wife and i would say i experienced that on some level too trev even though uh Yes, this ministry existed, but apparently there were some informal women's things. And so there just is this expectation out there that it's going to you know, look a certain way. But um, yeah, you're always navigating where we are as a, as a church and the needs of the people, what's working, what's not. Um, and it's nice to have that freedom to hold on to some and, and edit things as you go. For us right now, we just finished week one of this study. So we've got six more weeks of it. Um, and women's group will continue. Encounter podcast sparingly is continuing. <laughs> But seriously, you do need to check out Encounter Podcast soon mm-hmm. with Hope and I because Hope's testimony is coming up soon. Mm-hmm. Um, and I know that'll encourage a lot of people. And yeah, just holding it open-handedly, but some really cool relationships being formed and um, growing deep and wide. I like, there we go. <laughs> Glad you didn't name that as the, as the women's ministry, deep and wide. 
Yeah. That's, I, think, I do think you had a challenge with that because, because <laughs> I um, had this name, which let's just put that on the record. I don't know if I talked about that on when you interviewed me or not, that I want this to go on record. I prayed about it, felt like, you know, okay, yeah, I kept from Isaiah 26, three and Jamie, I emailed oh, yeah. Jamie Allen for oh, his yeah. approval. I, I have this. the record somewhere of him going, sounds great. You've got my, you know, whatever one sentence reply. And then he tells me, like six months later, you know a that a kept woman. woman is like a mistress, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So John wouldn't know that. That's a yeah, because he couldn't even watch <laughs> wrestling. But um, <laughs> I didn't either. Apparently, it's or an old term. <laughs> I know. I remember going to the movies with you to that, and you I'm felt sorry, some way about it. <laughs> but this, yeah. But anyways, don't name it kept men. Lamar Choate's <laughs> suggestion was unkept men, but you didn't go with that. You purposely did not. It, and I think it is perfect that Trevor doesn't have a, a title because you're you're Just central men, fact, yeah, men. exactly. Or central men, and you should name your podcast the Mention It Podcast. No, Mention It Round Two. Season two coming it. soon. <laughs> Just uh, I still don't believe we're that. finishing up production, <laughs> wrapping up things of season one. Stepping into a new season. I don't think we're ever getting a new season. I think it's just one long, continuous season. I Yeah, I think so, too. So here's the thing. Well, wrapping up, I really think it was, I'm saying I think a lot, but I know that there. this was a perfect um, for you guys to guest in this week. I mean, you preached on communities, but talking about how communities have formed within our community of Central Christian Church, how, how these have strengthened, how people have leaned in, and they've worked on their, their inner work so that they could be uh, working on people that need to know about Jesus and what he's doing in uh, our lives. So thank you so much, Maria, Trevor. You're welcome. John. Thank you. Good job, Jared. Next week, you're going to be back in the saddle, and we're looking at relationships. We are. Yeah, something we talk about a lot here. It seems like we've heard that word a couple times. Yeah. But again, I, I really appreciate this series, and I know we're trying to keep it pretty general, but it's it's hard to not do that, mm-hmm. not to talk about specifically about the sermon, but we as a church are making relationships matter, and I think these ministries are testimonies to that, to yeah. making them matter, letting people know that they matter uh, so that they can know about the relationship that matters most, which is Jesus Christ. Mm-hmm. So, episode 60, you'll get there one day, guys. Yeah. Maybe a couple years from now. <laughs> You're still we'll hoping. See. But again, quality, quantity over quality. That's the key. So, uh, I've thanks. Heard good things about this podcast. Well, from me, probably. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you next week. We'll have, uh, I think we're going to have some new guests. So, we're going to talk possibly to Eric, but we're also bringing in. Basically, slim other staff. So I know, um, uh, Trevor, you're over our family ministries at Central, but we're bringing in some people within those ministries to talk about what God is doing in Kadipo, Ignite, and Fusion. So stay tuned. We'll see you next week. Thank you so much for listening, everybody. Bye. Bye. Bye.